Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to cover assume role with web identity with an example. So it will not be a hands-on video but I'll explain you the concept and probably do the hands-on in the last video. All right. So before we get started with assume role with web identity, there is one thing I want you to remember. Uh, basically you must have heard about it but I'm not sure how many people know what exactly it is which is federated user. Oh user right so let me just increase the font so federated ah, yeah federated user all right so you must have heard like people using this term federated users but uh, i'm not sure how many actually know what is a federated user so the definition of federated user is a user that can access multiple applications with single credentials right so if you are in a company using okta or some ad uh, active directory to log into the applications which your company is using uh, like AWS or it can be any applications like mm, draw.io or lucid charts or anything right mostly AWS uh, consoles so or you are basically logging into logging into your uh, identity provider like Okta or your AD or uh, whatever active directory you are using and using those credentials, you are basically act, uh, logging into the other application. So you don't have to authenticate and authorize with the other application. So you single credentials that you have are used to log in, into all the applications. So that is federated user. So just keep that concept in your mind, right? Now coming to assume role with web identity. So what is this assume role with web identity? So assume role with web identity for the theory is basically an AWS STS API call, STS secure token service. So it's an AWS STS API call, which basically lets an entity or uh, an application uh, assume an IAM role uh, using the web identity token, using a web identity token and an identity provider, right? So that's the definition of it but now let's see in example what i actually mean uh, okay so let me just get rid of this first so for example i'll take a pod right so this is a pod and this requires access to an s3 bucket right this pod needs some kind of access to this S3 bucket, maybe to basically do a get operation or a put operation or any other operation, right? So how we do this in Kubernetes? So first thing, uh, if you have heard about IRSA, which is IAM role for service accounts, right? So we'll be using service accounts. Mostly we use service accounts to perform this kind of activity, right? Uh, to give pod access to uh, an external application like AWS. Uh, before that, I just skipped one thing, so I'll just cover that. Uh, features of Assume Role with Web Identity. So what are the features? So there is one feature is that, in fact, there are couples. So the first is fine grain access, right? And the next is uh, short term. Creds, short term credentials, basically. So for an entity like pod, you would definitely not want to give a pod long term access and wide, uh, basically wide level of access to your AWS services. Uh, because if you know, if you're not using service accounts with pod, basically what pod does is it assumes or basically it uses an IAM role attached with the node, right? And if that IAM role has wide level of access, say, your pod only need access to S3 to do say a get operation, but the IAM role attached to your uh, node has say access to everything in AWS, right? You wouldn't want that. And that role has like long-term credentials. Those are not short-term credentials, but with assumed role with web, web identity, uh, these are short-term credentials. They persist as long as the pod persists, right? So these are some of the benefits or obviously there's thing like that you can integrate in OIDC, which is like a feature of it. But yeah, these two, I think, are like major f features of uh, Assume Role with Web Identity, right? Okay, now coming back to our example. So pod requires access to S3. So how we do it, 
basically so first first what we do is we create an i am role i am role and in the last video i covered trust policy right so in trust policy of this i am role we mention the oidc endpoint oidc endpoint of the eks cluster so i will probably show you the policy in the next video uh, not right now but this is what you have to understand so you create an iam role and in the trust policy you mention the oidc endpoint of the eks cluster if your eks cluster does not have an oidc endpoint you can create one it's a simple process right and you just mention that in the trust policy of it next what we do is we create a service account on eks cluster right and we annotate this with the arn of the iam role we have created right so you annotate you create a service account and you annotate that service account with the iam role which you have with the arn of the iam role which you have created and the last thing what we do is we create the pod when we when we create this pod obviously i'll just get rid of this and when we are creating this pod what we do is we use the service account uh, in the manifest if it is a deployment or if it's just a simple pod so you can just simply mention it as service account name and you just mention the name of the service account which you have created right so this pod will use this service account now where are the the token and everything which i mentioned right so idp which is an identity provider in case of this is basically the kubernetes cluster itself so kubernetes cluster itself acts as an idp or an identity provider right so when you create a pod which has a service account which is basically pointing to an iam role what kubernetes does so let me draw an arrow and yeah so what kubernetes does it injects a secret right so it is somewhere in var uh run secrets something like that this is the endpoint right so it is it injects a secret uh, in this location or basically it's not a secret it's a token so it injects a token in this is uh, in this uh, location and this pod uses this token to make the sts call the assume role with web identity call and basically identifies the role which it has to assume right so aws sts validates the token which are present kubernetes injects a token right so it is the basically how should i say it so you can say identity provider in this case right so this is the process which a pod uh, with a service account uses to access external services in aws like s3 or it can be another service right so this is how an assume role with web identity works so i hope this clears like what do i mean when i say assume role with web identity so yeah i think that's pretty much for the theory uh, in the next video i'll just cover everything on the console basically on ex actual terminal uh, actual cluster right so i hope you guys like this video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching